Welcome to the channel. This video is a little bit different than the ones I normally make. It's a bit of a funny story of uh, clicking the buy button before thinking your purchase all the way through. There was an easy solution to this problem, but easy isn't fun and it doesn't make for good content. So I ended up creating a lot of work for myself on this project. So keep watching and I'll explain how I got myself into this situation and then I'll show you how I got myself out with a pretty crazy build. And then at the end we'll run some prints on the uh, Saturn IV Ultra. About a month ago I sold my original Saturn printer and bought the Saturn IV Ultra after seeing some positive reviews and how the tilting bed drastically increased the uh, print times. My issue is that I lack the space to set it up. Uh, this is the side of my workshop you normally see on camera and you can see there's uh, not really any space left. The other side of the room is where I have my CNC and lasers and a lot of junk that I store between projects. So this is the area that I'll get a makeover to make it more functional and create a space for the printer to live. The first step is to clean up all of the old projects and materials that I've stacked on top and underneath the CNC. Then when that's done, I'll start uh, disassembling the enclosure. This enclosure served me well for many years. Uh, when a CNC is operating, it creates a tremendous amount of dust. And this contained everything and let me vent uh, all the dust outside. And then once I started uh, using my diode laser, I was able to operate it inside the same enclosure to uh, capture all the smoke and vent that all outside also. But uh, it's just too big for the space these days uh, for the amount of time I'm using it. I'm sure if I was to fully disassemble the CNC, I would find a use for it in a few days. So I'm just going to leave it on its uh, platform and store it as is. So if the need comes up, I can always just throw it back up on a table and plug it back in. To fill this space, I'll be assembling a standing table from FlexiSpot. They had reached out to me a few months ago if I wanted to demo a table, but at the time I didn't have a need or the space for it. So when this project came up, I reached out to them again and they were uh, happy to send me this amazing uh, L table. Uh, if weight is any indication of quality, this table is going to be amazing. Uh, I was shocked at how thick the steel was and how heavy all the components were. Um, after years of putting together IKEA furniture, you kind of get used to um, knowing how heavy things are when you try to pick them up, and this was not the case. I think I've used thinner steel uh, fixing the frame of my Jeep. This kit is pretty straightforward. You get uh, three feet, three legs, and two main support beams. Then the electronics and uh, a few other random parts for cable management. This setup came with the, the bamboo surface, which was also amazing. The touchscreen is pretty straightforward and it has four uh, programmable presets for heights. Once assembled, I had to perform the standard uh, strength test I see uh, everybody else do. Um, it was quite shocking when sitting on the table there was zero flex. Usually a table this side there's a little bit, but it was solid. And while I was lifted into the air, there was no noticeable strain on the motors. It was moving as if I wasn't even on it. So now that the table's together, let's get the uh, printer out of its box and see what it looks like. It 
so this would have been a perfectly fine setup, but you see, I can never leave well enough alone. Because overkill is underrated, my friend. So I decided what this desk needed was a custom surface. This way I could make it a little thicker, I can make the end of the owl a little, stick out a little farther, uh, I can incorporate the uh, vacuum system into the desk, uh, add some LEDs, you know, your standard stuff. In order to recess the LED lighting, I'll be building this out of half inch plywood. So here I'm cutting the uh, initial shape for the top and then I'll duplicate it for the bottom and then I'll add in a half inch layer of filler to uh, separate the two. For the lighting, I'm using LED uh, silicone strips to make it look like neon. So I have to lay out how much thickness I need to set them back so they're flush. I'm extending the one end by about a foot and to uh, hold the extension on, I'm using pocket screws. If you're not familiar with pocket screws, it uses a jig to drill a hole at a very shallow angle, allowing you to screw uh, two boards together. To build the center, I'm just using uh, two inch strips of plywood to uh, build a perimeter and then a few supporting ribs in the middle. In order for the cavity not to sound like a drum, I'm filling it with a rigid foam, but it seems half inch doesn't mean the same thing to the foam company or the plywood company. So I cut the panels down into strips so I could run it through the bandsaw and just shave a little bit off the top so that way they sit flush. For the top surface, I didn't want to just have a straight line where the two pieces of wood joined. So I thought I'd try something new and inlay some metal wire lacing to uh, hold the two pieces together along uh, with some resin to hide the joint. Here I'm laying out the pattern, but it seemed too uniform. So I went back and tried to uh, randomize the lacing a little bit. In hindsight, I think I put too many laces in. It's a little busy, but uh, at least uh, now I know for next time. To prepare the wire, I uh, used a drill to twist it together, uh, then hammered it flat to uh, create more of like a chain look. This also hardens the metal though, and makes it difficult to work with and more prone to break. So you need to temper the metal by heating it up and letting it cool down slowly. And this will make it soft and flexible again. Then it's back to preparing the wood. So first I have to drill all the holes. Uh, then I'll go back with a router to uh, create a small relief where the path of the wire is going to go. This way it'll sit flush when I'm done. Then I'll carve out a small channel that will be filled in with resin. The table is going to be stained black when done, so uh, before I add the wire, I'm going to mark out all the channels to make sure nothing gets missed. And then it's just lacing up the board uh, the same way you do lace your shoes, except with a hammer. With everything assembled, the table gets one final sanding, uh, and then we move on to stain. The staining process is pretty simple. I'm just using a wipe-on stain, so it's just a matter of wiping it on over the whole surface. I took some time around the metal stitching to make sure everything was covered properly. For the resin in the center channel, I'm just using some clear UV resin and adding some uh, red pigment to it. Then I'm just moving down one section at a time, adding some resin and uh, hitting it with the UV light to cure it. Once that's done, I'm going back with just clear resin to fill in the holes around the wires. The last step is adding a clear coat. The uh, back will get one coat of uh, finish and then I'll add three coats to the top.
Between each coat on the top, I'm lightly sanding with 220 grit sandpaper. So do you think the custom countertop was worth the effort, or should I just stuck with the bamboo? Uh, the big reveal is coming up, so let me know in the comments. After the last coat, the table sat for three days to let the clear coat fully cure. While the table was curing, I started printing the different attachments and couplings I needed for the vacuum system. The main inlet has embedded magnets, which makes it simple for me to switch between different machines. Underneath the table, I have an adapter that will go from the 4 inch pipe to a 6 inch pipe. These are connected together with flexible hose and metal tape. The 6 inch duct fan gets uh, attached to the other end of the table. And a 6 inch tube between the two parts. To control the different elements, I print up this little box that holds a standard 3 pole lighting switch. Last step is to hot glue in the LED strips into the channel. With that done, let's take a look to see how this turned out. And here's what the final setup looks like. On the left, I have my fiber laser that's used for metal. In the middle, I have my X-Tool diode laser that's used for pretty much everything else. And the Saturn IV is in the back, leaving this front area as a work surface. Since the vacuum flanges connect magnetically, I can just pull one off and slap the other one on as I switch machines. Then for the exhaust, I have a board that I can just place in my window and uh, has the same magnet connection on the other end. I also plan to use this as a sanding and painting station, which should drastically cut down the amount of dust and paint fumes in the air. I just have to unplug and move my uh, diode laser and I can put this filter box in its place. This is where the standing desk will uh, really come into its own because instead of having to sit or hunch over the desk while working, I can raise it up to a standing level while I'm painting or sanding and then put it back down when using the other products. FlexiSpot also sent me one of their office chairs to try out. I've been sitting in the chair while editing this video and it's pretty comfortable. I had a ton of different adjustability so I think it should fit any needs people have. And uh, so far, so good, can't complain. Now we can't end the video without at least printing something. And for that I'm going to try this uh, Sunlu water washable resin. Uh, I haven't tried it before, but uh, I've used the water washable resin in the past. It was okay, we'll see if this is any better. Um, I just like the idea of using water washable resin instead of needing to have big buckets of uh, isopropyl alcohol sitting around. To dial in the resin profile, I'm using Table Flip Foundry's Cones of Calibration file. Uh, this has cones on two sides, where one side is supposed to complete and the air side is supposed to fail. Uh, the little uh, mug has the liquid that's supposed to fit inside perfectly, and then the sword is supposed to be able to fit 
um, or not fit in the two holes on the one side and then easily fit through the skull. I'm placing the same file in the four corners of the build plate because the printer has a built-in calibration system that lets you run different settings at uh, different spots on the machine. Here's the build plate after cleaning. I'm just using a small Tupperware container at the moment as I need to get a proper wash station, but I'm very happy with how easily and how cleanly the resin's washing off just with water. So after many, many prints, I was able to find uh, settings that actually worked. The cones failed and succeeded as they were supposed to. Uh, the sword fit in the proper holes and not in the ones it's supposed to, and the cylinder of ale fit into the mug. For something real to print, I found this Roadrunner model online. As a lover of cars and racing, this will look perfect on my shelf. I scaled the model to 150% and was able to fit everything on one plate except for the smoke trail. Here's a time lapse from the built-in camera in the printer. You'll notice the tail is missing, that's my fault. I uh, adjusted some settings and forgot to put the supports back on, so it didn't really print. I also printed out this file I found online that lets you hold the build plate at an angle so all the resin drips off. And once all the parts are washed up, they just need to go for a little spin in my custom carrying chamber I built a long time ago. While those parts are curing, I can use the built-in vat cleaning process that exposes the whole surface at once, so it's easy to remove any failed prints. And here's all the final parts. Uh, I think they look amazing. Um, they're extremely smooth. I mean, they almost look injection molded. Uh, I really like the way this resin turned out. It cleaned up easy. Usually with water cure resin in the past, I've had to go over with isopropyl alcohol at the end to clean it up. This didn't need any of that. And uh, all the parts fit perfectly. This video is already getting a bit long, so I don't really have time to paint this right now. So I just temporarily uh, hot glued this together to see what it looks like. Um, I think it looks great. I kind of want to print this even bigger now. So that was quite the build. It uh, turned out pretty much as I imagined, but it always seems less work in my head before I start. So if you have any comments or questions, uh, drop them in the comments below. I read them all and I'll try to reply to as many as I can. Start your comment with the word table, so I know you got this far. Even though it was a lot of work, I do like the new space. It's a lot cleaner and much more functional than it was before. Also, I'll put links to everything I use in the video in the uh, description below. My next video, I'm planning to do a lot of sanding and painting. So if you want to see the table put through its paces with the dust filter attachment, uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching.